Just the initials are already. Right. down, yeah. Uh, I'm Matt Hullum, and I'm one of the uh, voice actors in the show. And which voice do you do, sir? I do Sarge, and I also do... Oh, uh, can you snap off a bit of Sarge? No. Oh. <laughs> it'll, it'll cost you money. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't have the costume on. Yeah, it oh, didn't, doesn't, doesn't work unless I'm in a suit of yeah, armor. No, that's that where all, sense. that's where the energy for the voice <laughs> comes from. So, and I also do uh, Doc in O'Malley, the cool. crazy doctor. Nice one. My name is Jason Saldana. I do the voice of Tucker. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I'm Kathleen Zelch, and I do the voice of Tex. Smart oh, one. Just, and for you, all those who have never played Halo or seen any of um, Red other people Blue, left. Who I think there's like else? three people, but they they're not here. So okay. But just in case, um, maybe explain a bit of how it all came about, and a little bit about the game and the show, and how you sort of went. Hey, let's. Um, well, basically, uh, Bernie, who's kind of the leader of our group, yeah. was looking for a way to make uh, gameplay videos of Halo seem like fun and interesting to people who. Yeah. You know, just wanted to learn about the game, essentially. And in trying to figure out new ways to show gameplay footage, he thought, why well, don't we just put some dialogue on top of it and see what Close that looks up. like, you know? Just make it a little bit funnier. Yeah. And it just kind of clicked and came together. And uh, after a few times, you know, the series was born. Huh. Did you ever imagine that it would grow to what it is today? I mean, it's got quite a following. And uh, Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. No, I think we're all Definitely not. Away. I yeah. mean, the, the first time I ever recorded the my audio for the first episode it was on, on telephone you know we were really? we, yeah we right. weren't taking it seriously That's at right. all bernie called me up and uh he was like hey uh will you be one of the characters in this show i want to do and i was like yeah and then he goes okay he's like um can i send you the can i email you the script i was like sure and then he was like actually, actually hang on i'm just gonna read you lines and then you read them back to me right now on the phone <laughs> and was and i was like i was like okay and then that was episode one <laughs> can you tell me about the strangerhood yes um, Strangerhood is a series we do in The Sims, yeah. and it's uh, intended to be like a parody of uh, reality TV shows and sitcoms and kind of just an amalgamation of all of TV genres thrown together. Sort of meshed. Yeah. That's what. Um, you've done three shows, Red vs. Blue, Strangerhood, and Panics. Yep. Um, which has been easier to make and why? Red vs. Blue. Red vs. Blue is the easiest to make, right? Yeah. Just um, the game engine is so the game engine. To utilize. It's really robust, and we know how to control the characters really yeah. well at this point, you know. Well, there's definitely a learning curve. Yeah. And there's no lip sync in, in that no lip -sync. It's also oh, yeah. on a, uh, we, it's on a console, so we can put four characters on one yeah, Xbox. And with, um, yeah. with Panics, we have to use a PC for each character. Okay. And then with Strangerhood, you don't have the direct control over the characters that you do. And, you know, you can't they actually control... Like harder to right, you've got to, like, try to tell them where to go and hope that they yeah. follow your instructions. So. Yeah, that's the big difference there is, like... We're doing the Strangerhood and the Sims, you know. You just you have to tell a character in the game what to do, and you hope that it does it. Whereas when we're shooting Red vs. Blue, I, you know, we have to tell Jason what to do with the controller, and Up we and hope down. that he does it. Um, are you restricted in your story ideas um, by what the game is capable of? Well, I, I guess we are in certain ways, you know. Um, but we try to use that to our advantage, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of the humor in the show for gamers has been... Um, you know, either referenced or built around different elements of the game, you know. Yeah. There was a lot of jokes early on about capturing the flag. And, I mean, I think that, you know, if you're not interested in in video games, it's still funny because, you know, there are ironic situations yeah. and, they, you know, humorous elements. It's but if you're a fan really of... It's really fun. It's legitly funny. Like, yeah. yeah I, well, we hope so. And you know, if you watch it, but you're a gamer, you get a whole other whole level of enjoyment. Of um, and on a technical level, because I've tried to figure it out and I've come up with a couple of ways. But how do you actually make, how do you do it from start to finish? In the way we do it is we have, um, we use two or more Xboxes. One yeah. Xbox has just one character on it. Yep. And that character's point so of view is our camera. camera yeah. And the other one has multiple characters because it doesn't matter if the screen's split up because yeah. you don't see what they see. They're the it's actors. The camera so the, the first Xbox will set up the shot that he wants, the cameraman will. And the, the characters on the other Xbox will run into the shot. You get so set up funny. how they want to go. Exactly and then exactly like... Like then just run, yeah, it just run it right into the, right into your yeah. editing software and capture it. Yeah. Crop out the stuff and look at it, make sure it works. Um, do you get much support from the corporation, like the people that you you're using their creations? Bungie, and Microsoft. Yeah, Microsoft and Bungie. Do they, do they help you or? They've you been know? extremely supportive. Yeah. yeah. And our our first actual paying work ever came from them. We did uh, these videos that would play in the uh, video game kiosks that they have in the major retail stores in yep. the States. 
and they, they hired us to do those. They've been extremely progressive and extremely helpful. Which we really so. appreciate. Going back yeah. to the website. Um, Red vs. Blue has been compared to everything from Clerks, uh, Seinfeld to Star Wars. What movies or TVs, uh, TV shows do you think actually influenced the writing of the show? Of Red vs. Blue? Yeah. Gosh, that's wow. a good question. Yeah, I would question. say Clerks, yeah. Star Wars, and Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what's the one I always like to say that Bernie ripped off? Uh, <laughs> Dark, Dark Star? Dark Star. Yeah. Movie called Dark Star, Dark John Star. Carpenter's uh, first yeah. or second film. And is that and so there's there is the influences and they're kind of you can see them and I can I don't yeah. know. Bernie denies it I didn't deny <laughs> it but, yeah. uh, I don't know I think that um, Red vs Blue even though it's it's set in a shoot 'em up you know kind of yeah. world it's still mainly like jokes about bureaucracy so I mean it's kind of like like the I guess in some ways like The Office if it was set in mm. you know in that world yeah. you know um, what's it like to act in a video game. <laughs> Uh, weird, I guess. Cause people, I mean, again, you know, people like tend to think that we're like good at the video game, or somehow yeah. we know more about the video game yeah. than other people. But that'd be like, you know, if you starred in like a movie about dinosaurs and you became a paleontologist or something. Yeah. You know, we don't really know anything more about it than anybody else. Okay, well, um, with the abundance of machinima being made out there now, do you think that your own backgrounds, um, what you did professionally before, sort of this? trolled into your life and sort of took it all over. Um, do you think that that's helped a lot and do you think that'll let you remain at sort of the cutting edge of it? I think so. I mean, Matt had a visual effects producing background but also hands-on technology-wise. So any of the visual effects that we need to use in the show, he's already aware of how to use the software. Um, Bernie and both Bernie and Matt went to film school. So writing the scripts and things like that, I mean, they can pull from the background for that. Um, using it like my background is producing animation and so my vision like we were talking about earlier is actually creating the game engine to yeah. create animation episodic animation or features so i think we are able to see the good of it and what it can be done and how you know how far we can push it yeah i think I, that said though i don't i mean i don't think that you need any of those skills to make it no no right? absolutely I mean, not I, I mean i mean anybody can do it and that's the beauty of of it. What's it like to be the uh, the first rock stars of the the video game machinima sort of sort of scene? It's pretty. It's great. It's, it's really awful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. What do you? I mean, I don't know if we actually uh, can Say own up to that. Right? Yeah. That we we are, but we definitely have been able to go a lot of places and meet a lot of new people and see things. I mean, we're we're, we're here in Australia. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know how right. cool is this? So. No, we've been, got a lot of opportunities. It's been really fun. Excellent. Well, we love the show and um, hope to see a lot more of it, guys. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks so much.